I shelved my Steam Deck OLED in favor of the all new and powerful ASUS ROG Ally X for one month and what I discovered was interesting. But before we discuss each device's pros and cons, let's dive into a quick overview of each device. The ROG Ally X has 24 gigabytes of RAM and the Steam Deck OLED has 16 gigabytes of RAM. The Ally X has an 81 hour battery as opposed to the 51 hour battery on the Steam Deck OLED. The ROG Ally X has an RDNA 3.5 Ryzen Z1 Extreme APU and the Steam Deck OLED has a custom RDNA 2 APU. So on paper, the ASUS ROG Ally X is already off to a really hot start. However, the ROG Ally X is priced at $799 with one terabyte of storage built in, and the Steam Deck OLED starts at $549 for the 512 gigabyte version and $649 for the one terabyte model. So that is something that you will have to weigh significantly as they discuss the pros and cons of each device. The Steam Deck OLED also comes with a really nice two layer case and cleaning cloth versus the cardboard stand that's included with the Ally X. But to be honest, I unironically really like the cardboard stand that's included with it. But there's a lot more to these devices than just their specs. So let's start off by discussing how they actually feel to hold and play for long periods of time. Both of these devices are very comfortable to hold and feel very well made. However, they differ dramatically in design. The Steam Deck OLED has two parallel thumbsticks at the top of the device similar to that of the Wii U. And what at first glance may look unnatural, actually feels great in practice. The ROG Ally X, on the other hand, has the familiar Xbox style layout with asymmetrical joysticks. This looks like it should feel natural, but on a handout, it actually isn't the greatest. Don't get me wrong, it's not as bad as like the Nintendo Switch or something like that, but I just don't find the Xbox layout to be the ideal form factor for a handout in general. It just feels awkward for my right hand to have to sit a little bit lower. I have no complaints about the buttons on either device, however, but the Steam Deck OLED has four back buttons instead of the two on the ROG Ally X, if that matters to you. And the Steam Deck OLED also makes use of two haptic feedback touchpads, which I found myself using way more often than I expected. If we compare the shapes of both of them, however, you can clearly see the Steam Deck is wider and has deeper grips, but the Ally X really isn't a slouch either when it comes to grips, and also has much better grips than the previous version of the ROG Ally. Overall, I find the button and joystick placement and shape of the Steam Deck OLED just a bit more comfortable for long play sessions in comparison to the ROG Ally X, but just marginally. One of the more distinguishing factors between these two handhelds, however, is what operating system each is running out of the box. The Steam Deck OLED runs SteamOS and the ROG Ally X runs Windows. If you've watched my other reviews, you already know I prefer SteamOS on a handheld due to its simplicity and ease of use. However, it was announced recently that SteamOS will actually be ported to Windows devices at some point. But to elaborate a bit for those unaware, SteamOS is essentially a console-like operating system but on a PC built on Linux. The best part about it in my opinion is that you can turn the device on, click your game, and you're already gaming just like if you were to turn on your PS5. It makes it so easy to get a quick play session in on Elden Ring or something that you've been playing. There's also some customizations you can do on SteamOS as well, like I'm showing in my B-roll right now. But it has some major drawbacks as well, like newer Call of Duty titles are unplayable, and Xbox Game Pass is just flat out incompatible currently. Windows on your ROG Ally X, however, is literally just like a desktop PC, but you have to maneuver it with the built-in joysticks and touchscreen. But Armory Crate SE, which is ASUS's proprietary software, helps with the navigation a little bit. Though it doesn't completely replace the operating system and it doesn't streamline the gaming experience perfectly. It does, however, make things like driver updates, fan curve adjustments, and other things a bit easier for those who have never used a gaming PC. It's clear though, that Windows 11 was just never designed to be used on a handheld. But if you want to use either of these handhelds as a desktop by using a dock, a keyboard, and mouse, the Ally X is much better considering you can use it with all Windows applications with zero issues. But until Windows makes a dedicated handheld mode, I will always prefer SteamOS over it. However, Windows is still a versatile operating system and great for desktop usage. Long term, this will also be a non-factor since SteamOS will be made available for the ROG Ally X at some point. But for now, the Steam Deck OLED software is my preferred way to play on the go. 
The displays on each of these devices are also very different. Each display has its own merits and drawbacks. The ROG Ally X makes use of a 7-inch 1080p 120Hz VRR IPS display, while the Steam Deck OLED makes use of a 800p 90Hz HDR OLED display. So let's start off by talking about the Ally X's display. One of the most underrated aspects of the ROG Ally X's display is its use of VRR. Despite how powerful the Ally X is, a lot of games on the Ally X still won't run at a high consistent frame rate. So having the ability to leave the frame rate unlocked creates a much smoother gaming experience. This is a feature that is sorely missed on the Steam Deck OLED, and in fact, it's not even on the Legion Go either. It is, however, on the MSI Claw, which by the way, I did a review on that as well if you are interested in seeing how I feel about that product. However, the OLED display on the Steam Deck is nothing short of amazing. It's super bright, it supports HDR capable of up to 1000 nits, has the best contrast possible, no backlight bleed, and low latency due to it being OLED. Its biggest drawback is not having VRR and it being only 800p versus the Ally X's 1080p screen. But generally speaking, I can't declare a winner in this category because they're both good for their own reasons. If you want a higher res, higher refresh rate IPS screen, the Ally X is the winner here. But if you prefer a lower res 800p 90Hz HDR OLED display, the Steam Deck wins here. But before we talk about gaming on each handheld, let's briefly talk about the speakers. The ROG Ally X actually has Dolby Atmos speakers, which sound pretty good. But as I pointed out in my review of the Ally X, the speakers sound muted compared to the original ROG Ally for some reason. While the Steam Deck OLED has very good speakers that are much improved over its predecessor. The Steam Deck OLED sounds louder, but I'm not sure I can definitively say it's better than the ROG Ally X due to my lack of expertise in audio. So just have a listen and you decide for yourself and let me know which one sounds better in the comments. Now, let's talk about the gaming experience. Gaming on both of these devices is great. However, the ROG Ally X clearly has a distinct advantage in performance. The Z1 Extreme is much more powerful than the Steam Deck APU and it has eight gigabytes more RAM. On the other hand, while less powerful, the Steam Deck APU is very efficient. And as I discussed in my dedicated review of the Steam Deck OLED, it's actually much more capable than people give it credit for. Red Dead Redemption 2, Cyberpunk 2077, Elden Ring, and other new AAA games actually run pretty well. But of course, they will look better and run better on the Ally X. But that doesn't mean that the Steam Deck OLED doesn't have some advantages of its own. I think people really undersell just how impactful HDR is, especially on an OLED display with infinite contrast, where in games like Resident Evil or Alan Wake 2, it makes a massive difference. The OLED display creates perfect blacks, couple that with 1000 nits HDR, and you will really start to appreciate just how special the Steam Deck OLED really is. But the ROG Ally X is still gonna run better at higher resolutions and higher graphic settings. But on such a small screen, I rarely find myself missing those extra pixels. But the smoother frame rate, however, is definitely something that I appreciate from the ROG Ally X. The Ally X can also run Call of Duty, Rainbow Six Siege, while the Steam Deck is incompatible with the anti-cheat software both of those games use. So if you plan on getting a handheld for Warzone, it should be very easy for you to decide just based on this point alone. Overall though, the Ally X is clearly a better handheld when it comes to gaming performance. But there's more to consider when it comes to gaming experience in my opinion, like how long the battery lasts, the displays which we already covered, how convenient it is to game on, and how comfortable it is to play for long play sessions and so on. So I really wouldn't judge these two devices solely based on how powerful they are alone. I know a lot of people who bought their Steam Deck OLED for indie games and emulation as well, and I think it's the perfect device for that. I also know a lot of people who only care about performance, and if you want the best performance, there's really nothing currently available that will beat the ROG Ally X, so your decision should also be made very easy here. But the higher performance of the ROG Ally X must mean it has a worse battery, right? Well, the battery inside the ROG Ally X is an 80 watt hour battery, which is nearly double the size of the 50 watt hour battery in the Steam Deck OLED. But in practice, both of these devices get around the same battery life because as I discussed earlier, the Steam Deck OLED is better optimized for efficiency. But the Steam Deck OLED maxes out at 15 watts versus on the ROG Ally X, which can go up to 25 watts in turbo mode while on the go and up to 30 watts while plugged in. So officially, the Ally X has better battery on paper. 
but in real world practice, they are both roughly the same in battery life. And it's difficult for me personally to tell the difference without looking at a stopwatch while playing. And now to wrap things up, let's discuss value. These two handhelds are both premium devices. At the beginning of this review, I mentioned that we have to weigh the fact that the Steam Deck OLED is $649 for the one terabyte model and the ROG Ally X is $799 when discussing the pros and cons of each device. Well, for $549 or $649, you can get the Steam Deck OLED, which has 60 gigabytes of RAM, a travel case, an 800p 90 hertz with 1000 nits OLED display, a comfortable device, a great battery, acceptable performance in most games, and two touchpads and SteamOS as the operating system. But for an additional $150, you can get an ROG Ally X, which has 24 gigabytes of RAM, no travel case, a 1080p 120 hertz, 500 nits VRR IPS display, a marginally less comfortable device, a great battery, best in class gaming performance, and Windows 11 is your operating system. So if you value a higher resolution 120 hertz VRR IPS display, the versatility that comes with Windows and the best performance more, go for the ROG Ally X. But if you value the ease of use that comes with SteamOS, a bright HDR OLED display, and an extra $150 in your pocket more, go for the Steam Deck OLED and save yourself some money. But personally, I found this video to be especially difficult for me to write. These are both premium devices that really come down to personal preference. As they said in my Legion Go versus Steam Deck OLED video, everyone values different aspects of handhelds differently, and everyone has their own deal breakers too. Some people can't tolerate Windows, while others can't live without Xbox Game Pass. But for me, if I had no budget, I think right now I would get the Ally X just so I can be confident enough that it will be able to play the new and upcoming games that push graphical boundaries. But if I wanted to be budget conscious, I would opt for the Steam Deck OLED because I actually find myself using it more often despite its drawbacks just due to the convenience of its operating system alone, which I value very highly. But this review was never about telling you which one is better than the other. The purpose of this video was to compare what each product brings to the table and each handle's own unique quirks that I think appeal to different people. So I hope this video was able to help you decide for yourself which handheld is right for you. But that's gonna do it for today's video. If you found this video informative, leave a like and subscribe for more tech and handheld device reviews. Also, you might as well hit that little bell to be the first to know when my next video comes out. This has been Killer Cam 1020. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Peace.